What's going on, guys? My name is Corey Kamori, and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown channel. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Gravity's Union by Coheed and Cambria. Now, I'm sure you've uh, noticed by now that I have a special guest with me today. Please introduce yourself, sir. My name is Zade Patterson. I am a good friend with Corey, and we've known each other for a couple of years now. Yeah, a couple of years. And um, I, what I do for a living is I actually do a voiceover and a little bit of singing, but not too much. It's kind of getting into other stuff, but I'm doing a lot of film work, too. Yeah, so I, I asked Zade to come on this uh, particular episode because, one, I know Zade is a huge fan of Coheed and Cambria like Very. I am. And, uh, you know, again, wanted to give you the opportunity to spread uh, whatever projects you're involved in currently and, you know, some of the stuff that you've been doing lately. I know you mentioned that you've done some singing recently. I know you've also been doing some film projects. So real quick, so what, what are some of the projects that you've been working on currently? So currently I'm working on, uh, I'm doing more film stuff lately. Like besides my day job, I mm -hmm. work as a chef, mm -hmm. but um, with my film stuff, I've uh, recently had a short film done two years ago that's still winning a bunch of awards in like all the indie circuits, which is really kind of interesting just because uh, it was a no budget indie film. And it, is that the one that takes place in the convenience store? And yes. What, what's the title of that one? It is called For Love. Okay. And if uh, you want to look at it, I think we can. I, I mean, it's been out long enough to where. The director was kind of like, we don't want to show it too much. Mm -hmm. So if it gets into circulation, it doesn't, you know, like, oh, we've already seen it. It doesn't take it no out of the running with all the circuits that exactly. been going through. And, exactly. Okay. So, but I think it's been, it's been over two years and we're kind of like, I think we can kind of put it out public if people ask for it. So I'm, I'm, if anything, I'll send you the link or something like that. Sure, I'll ask the director first and then send you the link. Yeah. So on top of stuff like that, you've also done some voice acting stuff as well. You've done some mm -hmm. uh, like commercials. You've done some jingle stuff. You've also did. I know you did a you did a trailer for a for a video game. And what's funny is I saw this video game. You'll have to remember. You have to remind me what right, this video yeah. game is. But I saw this game on the Switch eShop. No, and, yeah. And your trailer is actually on there. I was like, oh shit! I think that's the one that Zayn was on. And I yeah. clicked it. I was like, oh, that's him. Yeah, yeah. It was um, Knights of Pen and Paper. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was for one. Okay, so fun story about that. So I got that gig randomly because. Um, a couple years ago, I was at Winthrop, and I was just a, I think I was just a junior, so that was like 2010, I think, and I was really good friends with the French department and like all the French students, and I met up with one, and I was like, hey, what's your name? He's like, my name is Lois, who are you? And I'm like, my name is Zade, I do voices. That was it. That's all our conversation. Like, hey, was. I need some voices. Give me some voices. Well, no. <laughs> five years later. Oh, okay. So quite down the yeah, road. It was like five years later, out of nowhere. He's like, Hey Zade. We were like friends on Facebook. He's like, Hey Zade, I remember a long time ago that you said you did voices. I would love to work with you. And I was like, oh. um, well, that sounds nice. I get that all the time, but what do you mean? And he goes, I work for a game trailer company out in France, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, what kind of trailer are you doing? And he was, he threw out um, Knights of Pen and Paper, and I was just like, wow. And at the time, I was kind of like, oh, this is an indie game, okay. And I was looking at it, and I was like, wow, this actually looks really good. Yeah. Like, this looks like a legit game. So I was just like, all right, I'll do it. And then we talked about money, and I was like, oh, wow, I could get this much for it? Okay, that's more than $30 I usually get. <laughs> he's Time like, no, no. Up that daily rate. <laughs> yeah, no. He's like, no, no, we'll pay you good. It's oh, good. There you go. Time to go to France. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And so we did that. and Ubisoft, if you're listening, yes, hook the boy up. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could speak somewhat Canadian. A. <laughs> <laughs> a plus uh, um a grade but um then a, a year later he calls me back up and he says hey they really liked how you did your characters in that trailer they wanted to, for the second game coming out they wanted you to just do it with the kid being a little bit older uh -huh. or the characters being a little bit older and i was like 
okay. And then I was like, so what are we talking with pay? And he's like, well, we'll double it. So you did the first one and you did the second one? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I did not know you did the first one. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah. The, hey, Timmy. That's you. Yeah. Oh, and I did not. I knew yeah, you did Grandpa. The, okay. I, okay. I, all right. So then the second one, then, when did you do the second one? I did the second one last year, around like November. Okay. So then I'm mistaking it because I have heard the first one. I didn't know you did the second one. So I'll have to look up oh, the second yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, sec the oh, second one. Time to go down that YouTube hole. Well, it's like the first, the first <laughs> Rabbit one. Hole. Yeah. <laughs> Not well, just hole. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Let's plug it. Anyway, a different kind of plug. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, different. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> ah, we okay. haven't even gotten into Coheed yet, and we're already getting all oh, sorts uh, of weird. Uh, kind of going into the Coheed stuff, if you would like to. Sure, yeah, about let's that make the now. transition into Coheed. Um, so, so, I, so what was your first experience with Coheed? Oh, okay. Because so, I have mine, and I've I've kind of mentioned it before on this channel, um, but we'll, we'll get a little more in depth, and then we'll right. get into the song itself. But what was your okay. first experience with Coheed? My first experience with Coheed was actually back in high school. It was like my sophomore year, and I remember me and my brother, before we would go to school, because we would drive with our dad, who was also our high school teacher. He was a high school teacher at our school. Okay. And when we'd wake up to get ready for like breakfast and stuff, we'd always put on VH1 or MTV and just watch the music videos and stuff. And it was like, oh, what music's out and what's popular right now? What at year was this? This was 2000 and... Um, um, 2005. Okay. And oh, that good Apollo year. Yes, <laughs> it was good. It was a good Apollo year, but on VH1, it was Favor House Atlantic. Oh, okay. So the one where they're in the bar, and then yeah. they uh... your eyes tell the stories yeah. of a day you wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went a little flat there, but that's okay. We're, yeah, we're still harmonizing. We're not trying to sing right no. now. <laughs> that's but, um, later. That costs extra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> premium snap anyway that would um, be for the patreon page when i create one <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if, i don't know if anybody will want to pay for that but anyway so uh, you were saying so uh so favor house atlantic yeah, so favor house atlantic came on and i was like oh my gosh this guy has a really cool high voice yeah and i was like and then that's all i saw of it and i was like going to school i was like i can't remember the name of that band because this was before like oh, no. internet was like super like Oh, I'll just Google it. It was right. before really all that was there. And I didn't have a lot of technology at home. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, what was that song? I can't remember the words. I just remember the sniper. All I remember is sniper <laughs> in the song. Sniper-y. <laughs> and I was like, well, the, it, and the, the band had a weird name that was like clogged organs and plumber tissues i was i was like where am i gonna find this band <laughs> holy shit yeah you would have been completely fucked looking for that i would have been like clogged plumbing something what <laughs> oh gee i'll just stick with system I guess. <laughs> system of but, a down it is <laughs> yeah but um so three year no two years later i was on a um i was like a a head of our youth group for our church and a lot of those kids were really in the same kind of music with that style and i said man Bloody twist that's interesting yeah no no yeah it was it was a cool youth group okay right but on. um we were on a trip and i was talking i was like man there's this one band i just can't remember what they're called and he was like are you talking about coding cambria and i was like i don't <laughs> know it. that that sounds familiar <laughs> yeah. and then he gave me a cd of all their acoustic stuff Ooh. and it was the keeping secrets all acoustic and then like Oh, welcome cool. and then welcome home. It was a burn CD okay. back during burn CDs. Oh, but um, I still I was listening those. to it and I was like, this doesn't sound like. I was like, I, this it sound like he has a high voice, but it's just it doesn't sound like him. And then I realized that he gave me the acoustic CD, and I was like, oh well, I'll go listen to the actual CD, and it blew my mind of like you know when you you hear the simplest version of a song. And then you hear the full productive track and you're like, oh my gosh, orchestra added. And like, it's like hearing Star Wars on a kazoo and then listening to John Williams with Star Wars. I think you would have a heart attack. I literally that. just crap myself and wow. then had to go to the bathroom and crap <laughs> myself again. Okay, so 
So In Keeping Secrets was your first introduction yes. to them. Okay. And so, then I went out and bought Welcome Home. So you bought Good Apollo after that. Yeah. Or, okay. or, or, or Good Apollo, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So for me, my first experience with them was, I'll never forget it. I was 14. I was mm-hmm. living in Houston, Texas at the time. And we used to have a radio station out there that played like, contemporary rocks that were like it was a hard rock station Mm -hmm. and like new rock and at the time they were playing a whole lot of like emo pop punk kind of stuff not anything i'm into at all and uh really i remember i had mentioned this in the last uh podcast episode that john and i did the one song that always resonated with me and i used to always wait for was uh lie my way from you by uh lincoln park and I would wait yeah. for that to come on because that was the one song they played that I loved. Well, then one time when I was listening to it, they started playing The Suffering because this was around, again, mm-hmm. uh, I guess I was 15. I'll take that back. I was 15 because mm-hmm. it came out in 2005. Um, and, I heard, and they started playing that. And, you know, you start hearing that. Uh, Listen well, will you marry me? Not now, now but. Know you well and you're suffering. You'll be. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this. I'm like. I really like these guitars. I fucking hate those vocals. What the fuck is up with that? <laughs> like, I hated it. I was just like, what is this? This is so weird. Like, there's cheerleaders in the background. There's kind of heavy guitars. It's kind of poppy. It's kind of progressive. Like, And I had never really gotten into, like, at that point, I hadn't really gotten into progressive music yet. Right. Um, but hearing that, I was like, this is really weird. I do not like this at all. <laughs> Fast forward to 2009, uh, I go to the movies and I see this trailer for this movie called Nine. Nine. And in this movie, the, uh, in this trailer, there is the most epic fucking guitar riff I've ever heard in my life. It, you know, it was heavy, but it was it was really groove oriented, <laughs> and, and, and you know, it sounded a little bit like Cashmere. Let's let's be honest. Yeah, a little bit. But but. I was like, damn, that is so fucking awesome. Who did that song? I go and look it up, and I'm like. Coheed and Cambria, and I go, wait a minute, isn't that the band that had the cheerleaders in the background? What the fuck is this? Like, this is completely different. This sounds nothing like that. And listening to the, even the vocals, I was like, wow, this dude has a lot of range mm-hmm. when it comes to his, you know, his vocal style. And you know, this was before I had ever heard bands like Rush and you know guys like that. So I hadn't really heard that kind of a high vocal style before. Right. But I was like, wow, like there's something really interesting and versatile about that style that you can really apply to anything. It can be super poppy. It can be really progressive. It can be heavy. It can be straightforward. So I really appreciated his, uh, uh, Claudio Sanchez's versatility as a vocalist. Mm-hmm. And from there I went, okay, I need to go back and I need to listen to this stuff and give it a second chance. Cause I really judged this really right, too early yeah. off of one song. And I really felt like I had fucked up at that point. So I went back and, and I went, I literally went crazy when it came to all of their music. Mm. I went on a crazy coheed spending spree, really. Yeah, just basically getting everything they've ever yeah, I had like, excuse me, I had about 50 bucks at the time. God, that's what happens when I drink all these LaCroix or, excuse me, this sparkling water, which is provided by Lidl. Lidl, please hook us up with some more. <laughs> <laughs> get that endorsement deal. Oh, get you, Lidl. Oh, yeah. Um... Uh, so I had like fifty bucks. I went out to the um, I went out to the record store and I just bought as much Coheed as I possibly could. And I snatched up everything except for their first album. And at the time they had um, this. So this was two thousand and eight that I went crazy with this stuff. Or two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yeah, because the movie nine. Right. Uh, two thousand nine. So um, they had. Um, uh, Good Apollo 2 had been released at this mm-hmm. point. So I bought that. I bought uh, Good Apollo 1. I got In Keeping Secrets. And then eventually at Barnes & Noble, I found uh, Second Stage. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And listening to it, I was like, oh, my God. This is like, I'm like, this isn't just music. There's a story to this. This is like yeah. Star Wars, but with music. And I had never heard bands like I had never heard bands go that deep into a concept where it's like multi albums to tell a story, mm-hmm. and it blew my mind. And being the sci fi nerd that I am, and comic book nerd I am, I was just like, "Holy crap! They got a comic book too! 
What yeah. else does this band have that I don't know about? Like, uh-huh. this is my band. This band was literally created for people like me that right. are crazy like me about this kind of stuff. So, so yeah. Um, I, I mean, I've considered myself a, a child of the fence since. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've seen them. Oh my god, I've seen them so many times live. They're the one band I've seen more live than any any anybody else. Mm-hmm. I've. Uh, Same here. I, I met them one time at uh, they played Weenie Roast. I think it was the second oh yeah that to last was like Weenie Roast, or maybe it was mm-hmm. the last one they had here in Charlotte. It was raining, right? I it ended up raining. It ended up raining. It didn't rain during their set, um, but I remember I went and it was during. It wasn't flogging Molly. Maybe it was flogging. No, Molly. it was flogging Molly. Flogging Molly was playing after them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they were playing after them, and I was waiting in line. Like a really long line to go and meet Claudio and and Josh and Travis and I think Zach Michael was, was still with them when no no Zach was Zach in the band was because this was right when uh, they had released Domino the Destitute. That's right. So it wasn't until after um, it wasn't until after the uh, uh, Black Rainbow. Yes, that, that whole debacle happened. Yes. Oh, he was a good so it's just player, so though. sad anytime I think about that mm-hmm. stuff. Them going through that, um, but I was super bummed because I brought my "You're the Black Rainbow Collectors" <laughs> book. Yeah, and because I, I have the collector's edition with the book, like the novel, and then like the hard book and everything. Mm-hmm. I brought it in, and security goes, "You got to put that. You got to leave that in your car." I'm like, "But no. I went. I, I literally. This is what I, I went. But Coheed signing things. They're like." Well, you're gonna have to buy something here that Coheed can sign. I'm like, but I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, I did. I was like, you know what? All right, fuck it. I, I bought a T-shirt, which, if anybody has is watching this video currently, has seen some of my older videos. It's hanging up in the background. I bought a Coheed T-shirt uh-huh. and I got them to sign it, and it was the <sighs> coolest experience ever because while they were doing that. I was talking to Claudia and I was saying, dude, you have no idea how much your music means to me. It has been super inspirational for me. You know, I I strive to make music like this too. I, a lot of my bands are progressively based and yeah. we, you know, we we have a concept and everything and I said, "Thank you just for what you do. Keep doing what you do because it, it really enriches my life." And he was like, "Thanks, man. I appreciate that." And the security guy was trying to push me along. Mm-hmm. But the coolest thing was Josh was taking his time filling out his doing his signature. He goes, "Go ahead, man. Keep talking to Claudio. Oh, he's good, man. He's good, man. I'm just I'm having trouble with this pen here." He was like taking oh, his so time. Cool. I'm like, oh, "Thanks, dude." And I was like talking to him about comics and everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What are you reading now? Or are you writing anything now?" And this was right before he had put out. Um, it was either T of Z or Translucid. I don't remember, mm-hmm. but um, he was working on that stuff. I believe or Kill Audio. He had already put Kill Audio oh, yeah, out, okay. and it was one of those two. But we were talking comics for a little bit, and it was just one of the coolest experiences ever. You know, I shook his hand, and I had that weird moment. I was like, I'm never watching this yeah, again, yeah. kind of weird shit, where I'm like, mm-hmm. I, what the fuck? I would never do that. What the fuck am right, I talking yeah. about? But for that moment, I was just on cloud nine. I was like, I just met one of my fucking idols, and they always say, don't meet your heroes, but it's fuck that meet yeah. your heroes no because yeah they're awesome at you least need to have mine have been fucking awesome so and anytime i have met them it's just like this is the coolest thing ever i'm so glad i did mm-hmm. this um but anyway i'm taking up way too much time um do, do you have anything else that you want to add before we jump into the song itself um okay so another thing that really impacted me with coheed was the fact that well i mean you can so i'm originally a bass singer which is really hard to find like good music to sing with as a as a ba- as a bass singer cuz everything's like either tenor or baritone and it's like oh man that's that's a reach for me and then it kind of strains my throat but as a bass singer because I don't have that middle range my soprano is actually pretty it's well crafted yeah mm-hmm. and so when I and I've had a bass type voice since like freshman year high school so i grew full beard and had a really low voice at a very young age and when i and i would go around and go (laughs) all the the chipmunk voices that kind of led me to doing all my voice acting stuff right well hearing coed and cambria just made me go oh my gosh i think i can sing this 
And so, like, I would sing along with the music, and that kind of also taught me how to, like, find harmonies, because he always, like, overlaps on his own singing Mm -hmm. with all the harmonies, and it taught me how to pick harmonies if I were singing along with something. Oh, that's awesome. And so that being able to have that high range and you can kind of hear it right now. I have that. It's, it's kind of like fry, right? It gets like kind of up towards your, um, almost like upper nasal, almost nasal. Yeah. 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 But it's still that we're like totally nerding out. No, like yeah, yeah. Lead singers just talking singer the shit. The vernacular and the 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 <laughs> screwsness. I don't and get the, to do the, this very often with people because usually it's guitarists and drummers I'm talking to all the time. And I'm just like, hmm. they're like, you don't know anything about anything. I'm like, no, you I'm don't just... know what an epiglottis is. <laughs> 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 you can't tuck your uvula in. <laughs> <laughs> but. But yeah, it's, now it's, I'm gonna like try to like oh, wait. Can I even do bleh, that? <laughs> don't. That's how you lose weight. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's but you hear that brassiness, right? Yeah, to yeah. the quality, and in doing that, it um, when I'm going to like karaoke and stuff, like that's the those are the places where I'm actually like it helped me sing the darkness. It helped me sing like a take on me mm-hmm. with Aha and. Coheed really opened up my ranges. And as you said, the versatility of his range in learning how to, because I'm a mimic, in mimicking his style of singing, that actually opened me up to singing the other types of styles like disco and like Bee Gees and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff to where now I can go be a bass singer and also be this uh, I don't know how you would describe it. Balloon being squeezed out like the <laughs> kind of thing, but like it, getting into head voice territory. Yeah, in head voice, okay. it really did develop my head voice mm-hmm. to where I could almost sing soprano, almost. Mm-hmm. But um, so we've been talking for quite a while, so let's get into the song itself. So into again, it. we're talking about Gravity's Union off of Afterman Descension, not Ascension, though. Really, they're all yeah, (laughs) wrong band, wrong band. (laughs) Um, but uh, you know, I know that this is technically a double album, but I usually listen to it like all front to back, so I always Mm -hmm. consider it one album. But anyway, it's off of Descension, and uh, so we begin the song with the words I flew head first into the light, weightless, crisscrossing, precise in a dream, or was it life inside this door? All answers wait. So saddle up my steed, where the lies live way beneath. Oh my, I think I've made a mess. This is all my fault. It's what I've wished. So starting off with this section here. Um, so let's, I, I guess we can back up and let's give some context to this album in particular. So conceptually, if we're talking about just the story, because I know when I did a Coheed and Cambria video, it was like the first video I ever did, and people were like, it's not all about the story, it's all about his life too, and da-da-da-da-da. I'm like, yeah, I fucking know that. Like, come on, really? You think he just pulls the shit out of his ass? Like, he's clearly tapping into his real-life experiences and popping it into the story. But, um, so, conceptually, so this album is a prequel to everything else that uh, takes place. It's, yes, it's even a prequel to uh, Year of the Black rainbow yes so uh, and it touches upon the uh, the journey that cyrus amory who is the namesake of the amory wars he he goes on this journey to discover uh what this uh celestial interconnected um essentially afterlife is mm-hmm. and it, it's the key work it's this uh, energy that binds all of these planets and the solar system together in this universe. Right. Um, but this is before they really know what it is. And when he does go up there, he's a scientist. He's, you know, he's he's a rocket man. Um, and he is burning out his fuse up there alone. He's up yeah, there. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> so he goes up to uh, basically discover what the inner workings of this key work is. And from there realizes that it's this connected tissue of kind of like an afterlife of all these past experiences p- people have had. Uh, he encounters these entities that were people in prior lives that enter him and influence him in some way or another. And he's gone for a really long time, and when he comes back, his whole life has changed. His wife is pretty much all but moved on because she thought he was dead. 
and she's started she's started a new life with a, another guy, and then all of a sudden he comes back, and things get a little weird, and they get a little. It's almost kind of now that I think about it, it's almost like it's almost like that really bad Pearl Harbor movie that. Michael Bay did back in the day where it's like, oh no, now Ben Affleck's coming back and now we're going to make this really weird with Josh <laughs> Hutchinson and Kate Beck. Oh my God. Oh, please. I want to get that out of my head. Oh, anyway, <laughs> Actually, I think it's more like Castaway. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, it is kind of like that. Ex- except let's go with Castaway because I'm going to edit yeah. the rest of that out. <laughs> 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 let's forget that ever happened. Oh, Just God. think, okay, it's, it's Castaway, but there are multiple Wilsons. Yes. Yes. And they take over tom hanks's body yeah basically. exactly <laughs> they make tom hanks trip fucking balls <laughs> literally it's like if wilson was like here take a dab of this shit <laughs> um well you're a basketball too <laughs> <laughs> we're all basketballs man <laughs> um so basically uh you know he comes back to earth and then all of a sudden uh you know his his wife is like well i guess you know we can start or we can continue where we left off essentially well he also becomes a hero yeah yes he is renowned uh in the community like the scientific community and just like in general because he brings back all this knowledge of what happens when you die and Mm -hmm. and basically the inner workings of their universe um but with this song in particular this is really where things take a turn for the worst in this guy's story um because you know, as him and his wife are trying to rekindle their relationship and she's about to tell him, look, I've been seeing somebody else. All shit breaks loose and hits the fan all at the same time. Out through the window. Out through the window. Um, so really what this section right here is talking about is, you know, they're driving, they're, you know, they're driving uh, back from, you know, kind of like, like a, a ball. Uh, yeah, it's like a holiday or like a ball or like a, yeah, it's like a gala type of mm-hmm. thing. A conference for him. Yes, recognizing his him. his accomplishments. And uh, what's interesting is Number City really talks about like there's this really big tragedy that happens, and all these people are like rushing to go and like save all these people that have been affected by this like car wreck and everything. And it happens before this song. You don't realize that it's tied into this song directly. It's like it happened before. Mm-hmm. But they're they're on their way back from this ceremony or this gala or whatever or ball and. Basically, shit gets bad, and they crash their car. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's interesting to me, though, is that... So it's, it seems like it'd be a pretty simple concept to bring across to the audience, but they get... Claudio gets really intricate with his wording, um, especially even in this first section here. You know that whole, you know, I flew headfirst into the light, weightless, crisscrossing precise in a dream, or was it life? You know, this whole idea that when they impacted, they just... They cross paths... And they were going towards their destinies. And that really sums up just they were passing each other anyway because he was up there and she was down here. Right. So what are what are some of your observations on this part here? Like, is there anything that stands out to you that kind of makes you go, oh man, this is awesome? Like or good like, way to say it. Kind yeah, of like, yeah. Um, I really did like flew head first into the light because it was like usually the light when you're driving is in front of you so if you're going into it Mm. it's like you're going towards the light that's in front of you Mm -hmm. when that that sounded just like a paradox but um, (laughs) um well when you're imagining like when you get into a crash if you shoot through the um the windshield Mm. technically you're going ahead of the light Mm. so I, I don't know. It, it was like my brain kind of. And, and you're going it. into the light of the car that you're hitting. Because yes, in this case, exactly. it seems like they're talking about that. Because I think later in the song, they mentioned something about a truck. Right. Like, um, mm-hmm. A 10 ton truck or something like mm-hmm. that. They say 10 ton truck or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's like you're ha- flying headfirst into that light, but then you're literally flying into the light of the afterlife too. Right. You know? Yeah. So it really can be just, it has so many different layers. And it's just yeah. like, oh, that's really it's cool. It's like, okay, he picked a, a good good way to describe Overlap. it yeah so let's uh so let's move into the um the next section then here um and this i guess could be considered kind of a chorus because this song gets pretty progressive so it kind of has a chorus it doesn't have a chorus and it's like yeah it kind of it's a chorus that changes the lyrics yeah but yeah. keeps the same rhythm and same chord progression correct so uh it starts with this uh with the words here and i was wrong to let you go 
I accept my mistake, but you will never know. This is my love into a 10-ton truck. Baby, please remember the better me. And then we move on into the next section, which is no time to change my life in the air before. Our maximum reach outweighed a part pictureless retreat. The terror meets the truth. No longer who. We know what we must do. Shadow dancing through the roof. So with the part that is, I guess we'll call it kind of our chorus right here, you know, the and I was wrong to let you go. I accept my, my mistake, but you'll never know. So the thing that I really like about this section for me is that it really anchors it in emotion. It really anchors it in the just what's going through these characters' heads mm-hmm. and really what's going through the head of you know the author or Claudio while he was writing this because one of the cool excerpts that there is in the uh, deluxe edition of this album is Claudio shares um, some of his experience with um, anxiety and in, in particular his anxiety with driving. And how I, I can definitely relate to that. Yeah. And how this song really is not only talking about, you know, all these things occurring from a storyline standpoint, but really his inner struggles and inner anxieties with driving. And it, like like you, I definitely resonate with that too. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't get my license till I was 19 because I was terrified of driving. Oh, yeah. Because my mm-hmm. aunt died in a car accident. And I was like, I just don't want to do this. I'm really nope. fucking scared. Mm-hmm. Um. But, you know, again, I, what I love here is that there's just this beautiful poetry of, you know, him talking about the emotion that these characters are feeling and then what he would be feeling, too, if for some reason something happened to him and his wife while they were driving. And I think it's a really universal thing that people can kind of right. understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think with that, his own anxiety with it, he's able to find good words to describe how that anxiety feels. Because I know it, it, would, it wouldn't come off as well. If he was just like, oh, this character's scared of driving, and then just treat it I'm like, oh, it's like scared of driving. I don't want to go. <laughs> like, that, like that does not sound nearly as epic. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and just add ooze. Ooh, ooh, don't want to get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> beep beep. <laughs> anyway, I'm a motorist. Um, but yeah, I think in having his own uh, description of what it feels like to him, I think that's what actually helps him connect to those other listeners that have that same thing to where like it, it really connects to them mm-hmm. on an emotional level with it. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's one of the things I think that Coheed is able to do so masterfully is that they're able to tie in all these weird fantastical elements with these really personal intimate elements. And I think that's why they have such a diehard following. I know that's why I'm a fan. And also that's like how they treat their fans in general. Mm-hmm. Like you were telling me about like, how they're like, oh, no, 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 keep talking to them. Yeah, like, they're, yeah. they're being really sympathetic, and, and they they're like, no, we're nerds too. Mm-hmm. Here, let's share in this, basically. So I think that he is thinking about um, having lyrics that are enough to where everybody can be like, oh, let's all hug. You know, that... It's something that it becomes this communal thing. You feel exactly. like you're a part of a community when you go to a Coheed show or you're listening to a yes. song and somebody else hears and they go, man, you're wrong, Jack Jackhammer. It's like, you get it. You know, yeah. it's, it's a really cool moment because it's like, it's really like how comic books were back before they exploded of just mm-hmm. like, you get it, you understand. Like, yeah. oh yeah, let's talk about all this stuff. Um, But you know, I, I really like too, and I don't know if this jumped out to you as much as it did to me, but I love the whole, this line here where it says, the terror meets the truth, no longer who. Uh, we now know what we must do. Shadow dancing through the roof. So that's really interesting because it's almost like the the lingering thought that um, the female protagonist has to, you know, she has to, come clean with Cyrus mm-hmm. at some point saying, look, I've been seeing somebody else. And it's like this specter looming over her. And, it's right. the, and I love that, that line shadow dancing through the roof. It's almost like this, this thing just like knocking on the roof of the car and being like, Hey, right. I'm still here. You need to fucking say something. Yeah. And no. Yeah. Like it really takes on a persona of its own. Mm-hmm. It's like really, really cool right there. So, uh, but let's move on to, uh, uh, to the next section of the song. Yes. Contact the life you used to know. 
gravity the world in tow. And I was wrong to let you go. I accept my mistake, but you will never know. This is my love into a 10-ton truck. Baby, please remember the better me. Driver, may I sleep with you tonight? Numbered uncertainty. City limits. Shoe strewn diary. The roar of the engine won't cease. All of my love and heart spilled in this car. Picture me the perfect enemy. Our lives one colliding up and beyond in this fatal possibility. I am your, I am your prize. So what that section is telling me, and I'd love for you to add, you know, anything, you know, that you've observed too, mm-hmm. um, really seems like at this point when they're driving back, this is the part where she's like, okay, this thing is telling me I need to say something. She does say it. She says, I've been with somebody else. Mm-hmm. What did you expect of me? You were gone forever. I thought you were dead. You can't fault me for that and everything. You know, I've just, I'd moved on and I, I, you know, I need to be honest and upfront about this. And I can only imagine how much of a shocking moment that would be a shocking revelation of, wait, I'm back. I'm not dead. And then all of a sudden you're you like, what? Yeah, exactly. And the shock and awe of that just causes this mayhem to ensue. Right. Um, and again, the way that the words are utilized just for me, perfectly but creates that picture for you to to visualize in your head Mm -hmm. um i do like that line contact the life you used to know as in like talk talk to him and like it's just an interesting wording of the life you used to know as in Mm -hmm. your husband who you haven't seen in a while and i I don't know i i like that interesting way to describe talk to him right because and i love that the gravity the the world in tow it's like everything is now going to just start coming back down to earth and right. it's like here we go we and it like be sounds honest. like it actually sounds like an actual like command like the universe right. is commanding her to do it exactly yeah exactly it's really really cool yeah really cool all right so let's move on into the next section here we wave welcome aboard we wave welcome aboard we wave welcome a oh, 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 oh. <laughs> in my eyes I drown oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Has he forgotten his place? Bait the hook and let it sink. No cause for alarm. Enter the master. I am Dr. Straight. Scalpel, keep that lung in place. Nurse IV needs refilling. Now watch the brain responding quite normal. This life I can save. So this is right here is really cool because this gets super visual with the words. Mm -hmm. And so obviously she has told him this is what's been going on. All hell breaks loose. He swerves and crashes the car into that 10 ton truck and they go flying Mm -hmm. and they crisscross and they're going on to their, their destinations and then this is picking up right after Number City. Uh-huh. Everybody, all the ambulances have gotten them together, and they're bringing them to the hospital, and they're trying to save them. And then Doctor Strait is there. I love this whole thing where he's just barking orders to everybody. He's like, yeah. "Scalpel, keep that lung in place. You know, you know, refill that IV. Forceps, forceps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little more dramatic than that. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. He seems like he's got his cool down. I mean, he's definitely cool, calm, and collected. Right. But, yeah. Um, he's Doctor Straight. <laughs> he, oh, he, not Doctor Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> doctor all over the fucking place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really like this part because you can visually just see it right in your head that this is this character trying to keep this other character alive mm-hmm. and it's playing out like a play almost or like a movie right in your head or like the, that that like montage of like getting the robotic leg and mm-hmm. you know that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it's interesting because i really like how he says you know this life i can save and you go when you first listen to the song at least i did when i first heard it, i go well, who is he going to save? Yeah, which one? Is it going to be him? Is it going to be Cyrus? Or is it going to be his wife? Right. And then you go, oh, no. When you finally figure it out, and you're like, oh, sh- this is one of those stories. Oh, uh, God. And here come the feels. Yeah. Um, 
But then we move into that next section where he says, every man has a point where he breaks or conjoins among pressure that floods to complicate matters close to the heart will define who we are. Do we love? Do we hate? We are only the meat. Damn. Holy Jeez. shit. We are only the meat. <laughs> <laughs> We we like are only like really vessels like for this. Down. Like, damn. Hello, meat sack. <laughs> <laughs> We're just balloons. <laughs> We're just balloons of meat. Um, which I think that section right there, again, is just adding to the prior section of just, you know, talking about, you know, all the struggles and the trials and tribulations that this character has gone through and now is going to continue to go through mm -hmm. in this journey of what's to come. And, you know... And the whole every man has a point where he breaks or conjoins. I I've always loved that. Yeah. Like, well, it's like this this segment is very much like the th theming is not the right word, but it's the the call out of like humanity is this. Like this is what happens in our lives because you know you got the story, you got um, him talking about like his anxieties, his personal stuff. This is the part where he talks about this is how people are. Because mm -hmm. at first, it's, this is how the story is. This is how I am, mm -hmm. along with kind of other people. And this is how every man is. His perception of the every man mm -hmm. experience. That's interesting. I, I never really thought of it that way. But that, that is true, and I, I think that's true, and I think that's really cool. It, it's kind of like the, um, the last narration Morgan Freeman would do at the end. It's like, and... We all know that people always take care of each other. You know, it's like it's that ending narration. Every man has a point. <laughs> yeah, and the penguin survived. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, I think too, it also shows that you know that was the one thing that was going to break this character more than anything was mm -hmm. this. This was the point of no return for him. That you know, he came back to her. That she was the thing that was keeping him alive. Right. And he came back and... Like, he thought all the other trials that he was going through were the big stuff. And this was like, oh, I'm finally back from vacation. I can rest now. And it's like, no, this is where the stuff that hurts the most is going to happen. Right. Absolutely. All right. So now we get into my favorite section of the song. Yes. So uh, let's move on to this next section here. We understood the unmistakable two romantics on holiday and how they stole our love. Cage, locked in perpetual motion, carving the wounds wide open, but you let the wrong one in. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and now just like repeat the, the that four times. Yeah. The, oh, my gosh. So first of all, um, before we talk about the lyrics there... <laughs> We have to mention that musically, because we haven't really talked about the music at all. Because I, I would we're working on lyrics right yeah, now. Yeah, when I would love to be able to play the music with these sections here, but I just don't want to get slapped with a copyright. Yeah, claim. Mm -hmm. it's just really shitty. Um, but musically, this is where the song just gets super epic, mm -hmm. and it gets into that epic Kohi territory that we all know yeah. and love. And it, everything just opens up. It gets heavy. It gets just, there's all these layers vocally that are going on, instrumentally that mm -hmm. are going on, because you got Travis playing the guitar solo underneath these riffs that Co or that Claudio's playing. And mm -hmm. I know he's playing a, a seven string guitar on this particular <laughs> section, so that's why it's heavier. But um, man, it's just, it ends on such a freaking awesome note where well, it's just chanty as all hell. Yeah. Well, it's also, if you look at it, like we understood the unmistakable two romantics on holiday and how they stole our love. You, the way that music is, it's, um, I think it's just, uh, I can't remember what exactly is. There's only like one instrument playing for that because it's, it kind of drops out mm -hmm. and you just, we understood the unmistakable. Oh, you're right. It, it, it well, pretty much everything drops down. Right. Everything drops down. It's and it's just him. like, it's like him saying, like, okay, this, it's like he's in a, different wording he's like okay two people driving down the road and then they see a truck and it goes bam like it, <laughs> it's not super, like not like super that. layman's terms but no yes. yeah yeah super <laughs> layman's terms but it's like he's 
it, it's I always when I always heard this song, this was my favorite part where it gets to that where everything drops out and then it builds up to the cage locked in per- perpetual motion. It's and I just that stole our love. Nah. It just adds to that building. Yeah, and I just imagine during that quiet part, you just see you see like a bird's eye view of their vehicle driving. And once it hits the cage, that's when it crashes into that truck. And yes. then you see all the glass and all the stuff swirling yeah, slow around. motion. Locked and in perpetual motion. Yes. And yeah, that, that locked in perpetual motion. The caged locked in perpetual mm-hmm. motion. The way it's sung, the way that it just lines up perfectly with the music and the visuals that are being established. I mean, it's there's like a, a There's like a... Kind of going in the background yeah. too to like, it's like I always imagine that part is like being the little fragments of glass. Yes, that, along with the major parts of the car being flung around. Yes, yes. And it's like that scene in the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie where that guy's walking down the steps of his. Oh yeah, and the, everything's the, the whole exploding, boat's exploding around. It's like that, but a car crash version of that. At least that's yeah. how I've always seen it. Yeah, yeah. Just that that quantum. Yeah. Physic. Like, slow down yeah know, everything it goes into matrix bullet time mode mm-hmm. and you're just like oh god that sucks yeah <laughs> so um but yeah i just and i think not only lyrically but musically this song is easily one of if not the strongest song on either of the Afterman albums and it's one of my favorite coheed songs um because again it has everything that i'm looking for in a coheed song it has a really interesting story or it ties into an interesting story. It's got the emotional connective tissue that all of their songs have just mm-hmm. from like a, well, I don't care about the story. I care about the people. I right. care about the person writing it. It's, you know, it's very relatable and it has so many awesome movements. The guitar work is great in it. The drumming is great in it. The bass, and everything. And it's also one of those where um, a lot of their music is very um, fugue where you hear bits from like the older albums and all that. You know, they do the little Easter eggs where it's like, oh, we did this riff in this first album and all that kind of stuff. This one, I, it was really hard to actually find any kind of remnant of another song. And it was like, oh, this is all just, this is pretty much original it's stuff. Un- like Uncharted territory, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I think, too, like that ending part definitely reminds me of that whole, like, man, your own jackhammer type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, or a mixture of that with that, like, the ending of In Keeping Singing Swords, they're just going, oh. Right. Oh, and you, you imagine, oh. like, like, it's like, the crowd kind of holding each other. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. It's it, like it, swinging back and forth. Yeah. Like, it has, like, it very much is Coheed. It feels like Coheed. But, like you said, it's different enough from anything else that, like, like, if you were to go and list, like, let's say they did a song, I don't know, they they didn't do anything like this on their newest album, but let's say an album after that, they were to have something that felt similar, you'd be like, oh, well, this feels like Gravity's Union, you know, like, yeah, it, Gravity's Union does not feel like any of their other songs. No. There's just Mm-mm. some elements where you're like, well, that's kind of similar to this, but it's very much its own thing. Mm-hmm. And and I I really don't think, I mean, I don't know, Cla- Claudio has always been pretty front and um he, he's always been pretty cool about putting some really relatable uh emotions and experiences into his music but this one just i don't know this one just feels so raw and visceral whenever i hear it usually a lot mm-hmm. of the stuff is hidden behind the concept yeah this seems like just i'm terrified of this i need to put it out there kind of thing no get yeah. it off my chest exactly i don't know if you felt the same way about it but that that's how i felt about it um because again, I, I've had that fear. I know what that feels like. Mm-hmm. So, um, but then, you know, what's, man, again, it's interesting and sad all at the same time because after this song occurs, we end up figuring out that uh, his wife dies. Right. You know, she dies and he has to try to move on. He's not ready to move on, doesn't want to move on. And eventually he goes back up to the keyword to find her. Mm-hmm. And the way it ends on that, it's just so beautiful. And poetic and sad as hell. All I cry every time I because it's um oh, two is my favorite one. Yeah, it just gets so like oh, sappy, eighties sappy. 
just Princess sappy Bride. Sappy doesn't need that an shit. era. It's just sappy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does well, get it, a little sappy. But it's like the good kind of sappy where you're just like, yeah, I wanted that to happen. And it's it, and they do it in such a cool way because like, yeah, she's still dead, but he gets to be in this perpetual reliving of her stuff. And it's like he gets to be with her. He, he gets to be with her. Yeah. More. Well, and you know, he also it the way I always interpreted the ending of that album was that he's going to try to figure out some way to bring her back, but not for himself, for the man that she ended that up is true. on with because he basically approaches him and it's just like you fucked up so bad. Yeah. You completely ruined my life and you ruined her life. You could have just let us do our thing. You know, yeah. and I think he goes back not for selfish reasons, but to go, all right, I need to right this wrong with her because mm-hmm. I love her. And at the same time, I respect her and I need to do this for her. Right. So he tries to figure out whatever he can do to do that. Right. And I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever finish that story, but damn, is it a good story. Like, I don't think he does. I don't think he needs to. Yeah, I guess it is one of those things where it's like, it's perfect don't tu- the way it don't is. Touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. it. Leave it alone. I think you did a good job. Yeah. I, I, for me, this album as a whole, like parts one and two, I feel like they're the most consistent uh, as far as the concept is concerned, where mm-hmm. everything feels like it fits into place, whereas all the other albums, there was there was always a song or two that made me go, oh, I don't really know what, how is this relevant to all this other right. stuff? And I know that, you know, just because I've done stuff like this before, mm-hmm. I know that you can't always live in that concept because you, you'll lose your damn mind. Right, no, you know? yeah. They're just like, oh, we just kind of wanted to do a song yeah. that did this. Just a one-off song that's and fun or whatever. That was one thing... I really loved about these, about Dissension and Ascension with the, well, Dissension I really liked because it definitely continued the story. Ascension was very much like, all right, here's another random weird world is he going to today? And it was like, like a domino and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's yeah. Like, You're like, what is this boxing thing? What the fuck no, is No, yeah, this? exactly. Like, and the, it's like, you watch it in the music videos oh, and I, I was like, video. yeah. And I was like, wait, this is actually part of the story. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, this is actually really cool. Because if anything, it gives him a little bit more, it gives him more cushion Mm -hmm. of, I can just write some random stories. Exactly. You can go wherever. Like, he's not handled down to, it's kind of like the robots and, oh man, what's that thing on Netflix right now? It's, um. Love, Death, and Robots? Love, Death, and Robots. Anthology type Yeah, the, of... it's like an anthology, and it's yeah. like you don't have to stick with one setting. You can keep going to these random settings, and you can just have like a, a guy you meet at the beginning that's like, and our next show is, and then mm-hmm. in- have them kind of incorporated into it. Right, and just have, you know, some sort of underlying message and theme that is going to drive that narrative. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it definitely does have a bit of an anthology quality to it, but then... The fact that it does connect it does. so well is just, I I every time I listen to it, I'm like, how the hell did he do that? Because this stuff mm-hmm. just would seem so random, but it works. Like you say, you get choked up anytime you listen to uh, two is my, my favorite, favorite one. one. For me, Domino is that song. Like I cannot watch that music video because that music video for me makes me think of my brother. Like oh, I love yeah. my brother to death, mm-hmm. and that song and that video is just about. It's a story of two brothers just trying to make it in the world mm-hmm. and things go bad spoiler alert <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um man that like i love that song and i i love that video but it chokes me up cuz i'm like damn cuz it, it's really a story about two brothers and if you have a brother then you would know what that feeling is mm-hmm. and um but yeah man just overall overall i i love this album to death i love this song very good very good so, well, Zay, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. This uh, was a lot of fun. Hell yeah. Dude. We'll have to definitely do it again. You know, we'll do more Kohi. We'll just have to do some stuff where we just talk about voiceover stuff because I, I, I definitely want to pick your brain more as far as voiceover stuff oh, is yeah. concerned. And uh, so where can people find you online? Where can they check out some of your work? And how can they reach out to you if they want to, you know, hit you up for any uh, any work? Any kind of, you, know, you yeah. need a job? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So the best way to find me and like my stuff is uh, you can definitely reach me on Facebook. It is a uh, Zade Patterson. That's the handle, and then just Facebook. I'm like one of maybe two. 
So it's like Arabic name. Look for the beard. Scottish name. Yeah, just look for the beard. It's somewhere <laughs> in there. And then um, on Instagram, you can find me at Zade Patterson. Oh, so hard. But um, you you can find a lot of stuff from there. I put a lot of like um, my stand up jokes and just random videos and oh, just look at my life <laughs> like everybody else. But um, you definitely can check out some of my stuff doing that. And then also I have my fan page on Facebook. I have a YouTube page. It's a uh, the Zaderade and all one word, all lowercase. I don't put out that many videos, but you know, I may do some in the future. So, okay. Awesome. I'm, I'm trying to think of other stuff to do. You can kind of, you can actually find me and my brother doing, um, we used to have a hypnosis show because i'm a hypnotist and we used to have a hypno show in college and you can find those videos like just put hypno zade and ted a jack of all trades over here <laughs> i gotta brush it off every once in a while <laughs> and pretty soon i'm sure you'll see him like uh I'm just going to put it out there. You, you definitely need to audition for like uh, Marvel's iteration of the X-Men. You could, you could definitely I, I you could, could definitely, definitely do uh, Wolverine. You're you got the right build, you got the right height Go for Wolverine. Oh wait, he is Go that short. Yeah. yeah, man. I could see you with some yeah, claws. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was total Steve Bloom vibe right there. <laughs> oh, dude, Steve Bloom is amazing. Have you met him? Uh, well, I did one of those We're like We're getting a little ranty, but I don't okay, care. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I did one of those like free um uh, the podcast things with him, or not podcast, but um, he did a, like a uh, voice session or something. Yeah, voice the voice session thing that he do, he's doing right now, where you can do like a free segment, and he kind of uh-huh. like tells you like this is what I'm trying to do, and in doing this, you kind of get a discount. So, plugging Steve Bloom, check him out. He is doing these kind of live uh, sessions, and if you get on that live session, you can actually get his other courses for a discounted price. Oh wow! So oh wow. I'm helping you out, Steve Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it back our way, Steve. Big fan. <laughs> well, Zay, thank you so much again for coming in. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys uh, have any other thoughts or ideas as to what you think this song is about, please leave a comment below. Let me know. As always, I've been Corey Kamori. I am Zade Patterson. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>